Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, and I'm not sure how many people are in here already. We got a really cool live tonight. Um, <clears throat> we're going to see carbon fiber tested and see how strong it is. I think you're pretty damn surprised how strong it is or how tough it is. Don't forget to like the video if you like the content. And um, <clears throat> we're going to pull up a bunch, of, a couple different tabs. We have a few things to talk about tonight, but I think it's going to be pretty interesting today. Uh, what's up, Knife Sergeant, Russ, Lacey, Ed, Sinister? Who else we got in here? Um, yeah, I found this. Actually, Kara showed me this video. And after the post, even Lavender Pants, he knew exactly what I was talking about because there's a video going around online. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, right off the bat, I want to talk about EMP knives. What's up, dummy? <laughs> Talc is in the house. Um, <clears throat> so EMP knives. I got a couple comments on my video of the Nimble saying that he's stealing designs, right? I don't know if he is or not. You know, the, the way I look at it is that all knife designs are influenced one way or another, right? One way or another. It's impossible in 2021 to make a knife that doesn't resemble a knife. It's impossible. Think of a knife design, I guarantee there's one out there very, very similar. Now, there's other attributes you can put into the knife, right? Or certain little features, right? Um, that change it and make it your own. Whether it's through grinds, clips, action, locking system, uh, jimping, uh, choils, whatever. Swedges, um, finishes. But the EMP Nimble. It looks very similar to some Ferrum Forge designs. I also had somebody say that it looked like um, uh, a Medford, right? A Medford. And it does. It does. It definitely looks like some Ferrum Forge designs for sure. <clears throat> Ferrum Forge designs are pretty simple and good looking knife designs. So, you know, but. <clears throat> I wouldn't go as far as saying, and I, I'm not saying they're not. I can't say whether what they're doing, but I will say that they may. I'm. I, I thought about bringing it up. Maybe I'll show it here. Joseph, thank you, man. Thanks for the donation. I appreciate that. Um, very much. I thought about pulling up their Instagram. Because on their Instagram, they show the new large version. I figured it'd be fun to talk about. So in here in just a little bit, um, if I forget, remind me and we'll pull it up on Instagram because we're going to go on Instagram here in just a minute because there's a couple things I want to show you guys. But there's a, um, a, a larger version of the Nimble coming out. And he was asking in a post, if he should or which one people liked better whether it was literally the small version blown up exactly the same or a sheep's foot version and i couldn't help but think the sheep's foot version looks just like this i and i'm not saying he copied it whatsoever but it does <laughs> it looks very similar to this and you guys will see when we pull it up but is he copying it? No, I doubt it. I bet he just took his design and put the sheep's foot on there with a fuller, right? Like I said, it's difficult for knife companies and new knife designers to not be inspired by other knife designers or other knife designs. I don't think it's right for us to just downright say that they're copying and leave it at that. That can really hurt a knife maker designer's reputation. And I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying off based off of one design, it's hard to say that. Um, now, if something was exactly, you know, especially with logos, then we're talking about copying. But he went through a lot of effort to get his design out there, a lot of work. So I don't think it's something like that. What's up, Bama Knife Guy? When the hell are you going to come on alive? Oh! Not Your Average EDC will be on this weekend's live on Saturday. If you guys don't know who that is, definitely go check out her channel. She has a YouTube channel, Not Your Average 
EDC. She hard uses her knives, and she's going to be on here on Saturday. And it's going to be a very interesting conversation, I can promise you. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've already got a whole bunch of questions for her that, um, and I'm not going to do the stupid little, uh, how did you get into knives and stuff like that? No, no. We're going to get deep into to hard use knife questions, talking about all kinds of stuff and her opinions on them, so on and so forth. Yeah, she is pretty cool. She's pretty awesome. She already did a Q&A, by the way. So if you are, guys are interested in those questions, how she got into EDC, how she got into knives, stuff like that, go check out her Q&A on her YouTube channel. Um, Somebody asked me to shout something out. I got to remember what it is. Damn it. Hopefully I remember here in a second. Um, Man, I forget so much, man. I talked to so many people that, it's hard. Um, I usually write it down and I meant to write it down, but I didn't. So forgive me. Um, Nick says, Hey, Jared, do you think putting thumb studs on the full size Centauri would work well or possibly a opening hole? I know it would work well uh, because it has a front flipper. It's you know, it just goes without saying because the detent is set up basically for that type of action. So, yeah, if you could put thumb studs on there, that would work or an opening hole. I reverse flick it off of the, the satin finish all the time. You know, just uh, if I have a knife here, I can do it with where I just put my finger on the side of the blade, you know, like this. And it works. So I don't see why not. How many people we got in here? 42. We'll wait just a couple more minutes and we'll play one of the videos. Um, next thing. <clears throat> How logical are oh, it's from? So, <clears throat> um, Dirk Weirning, he always posts these little memes on uh, Instagram. One of these days, we're going to check out his, uh, his Instagram on here because he's got a hilarious Instagram. And... He posted a thing showing um, like a kid in front of a cereal box. And he said, in my days, we didn't have iPhones or iPads. We read the boxes of cereal. And that's so true. Like even to this day, when I eat a bowl of cereal, I sit down with the box in front of me and I read the back of it just out of habit. Because growing up, you know, I never had no phones or anything like that. And then when we did have phones, they were like folding phones or next towels. Like they weren't, you couldn't do anything on the screens, right? Besides call and message and things like that. And even texting wasn't a thing. So we had pagers. Um, so boxes of cereal had entertainment on the back of them. They had games and little things to read. And it was just natural for a kid to just read the box, the back of a box of cereal. And I thought that was so interesting. Um, you know, seeing that, that little meme, because it's so true. Um, tell me if this is a good idea. I want to make a stateside map listing of all the knife reviewers and what States they're in. That way people can view their local knife channels and maybe link up IRL. Um, I don't know. I would ask the knife reviewers. I personally don't care, but a, a lot of them might not want their information out there like that. Like I couldn't help but think when, uh, because some people like to keep their information personal and some people, you know, they're, you know, it just depends on the person. Um, but I've heard other channels say locations of people that I know usually don't like it even though they might mention their state they don't mention their town or their city or anything like that and uh you know i've al i've always wondered like if that was crossing lines with that person you know so but I, you just got to find out from the people but i think that's an awesome idea you know with the ones that don't care uh da, da, da. so what do we got 49 why isn't it not letting me like the video? Yes, I like my own videos. There it goes. All right, 51 in here. All right. Um, also, guys, I want to thank you guys for tagging me in uh, on Instagram with things. I really do appreciate that. Um, it definitely helps get the channel out there and spreading everything. You guys are awesome. I do appreciate that so much. 
Bama's in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Come fucks with them. Uh, bring hash brown, Shane. <laughs> um, getting my chow at Waffle House. Bees reads the ingredients and can't find peanut butter. Ooh, what just happened? So then I'll get the Jeff and scoop me some. We got a really interesting conversation going on in the chat right now. I need to send you my three hinders for new edges. Send them on by. Hit that stupid like button. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's yelling at me to like it. Have you seen the new concept button lock? I have. Um, yeah, I have seen it. Uh, we're gonna talk about the new a new. Uh, button lock coming from kaiser here in just a little bit uh well it's not new it's a second version of the one you guys might have seen it on knife junkie uh but yeah i'm hoping to get uh one of each i'd really like to um we'll see how it goes um not that i have a channel but i'm austin texas knife friendly hit me up yeah i think uh, i think for the majority of people majority of people don't care um you know, like even like with uh, with certain little details, the way I look at it is like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, I know there is an extent to that, though. You know, there is a, a point of which you might want to make your information private. But I I think by that time, like if you were like, say, say Nick Shabazz, right at the, at a certain point, then move locations a little bit and then start over with the information. Right. Um, but I know some people, like if you're in a place where you know, you're not going to relocate, you're going to be here forever. Maybe you might not want to, because you don't know what can happen with your channel or people. Mike, I'm the hell he's had death threats to his child. So you guys can imagine. Um, and I think it was somebody who knew where he lived too. So I have an armory in my house, bro. Always ready. We were going to talk about, and I never did it. Um, but somebody asked me because I did a video on how to, to not let your house look like a target. And it was basically about certain ways your house looks, certain things you do with your house, the way your house looks to say somebody wanting to do damage or wanting to, to do something, you know, do some harm, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he, the person had said, I should do a video on your your regular appearance right like you walking around and things like that and how not to be a target like that and i found that very fascinating and one of these days i i sh i could do a video about that because that is absolutely a thing a lot of people think like walking around like say looking like you have a firearm right walking around and looking like you have a firearm puts a target on you because firearms are are like gold literally you can sell a firearm faster than you can sometimes sell gold. Um, it's so fast. And any type of person in that line of field, you know what I mean? They, they have somebody, multiple people who buy firearms from them. So if you are somebody who looks like somebody who has firearms, you're a target. Like, that's just the way it is. And I'm not saying like Bama, Bama's, you know, fucking, he probably see somebody coming a mile away, but I'm saying for, for people, for a lot of people that um, maybe are in certain positions where they could be in areas where, you know, anyways, we'll talk about that stuff during story time. Let's get to the video. So right now, what I need you guys to do, I got it set up. I need you guys to tell me if you can hear it. If you can't hear it, really doesn't matter. But I'll unplug my mic and we'll figure it out and I'll get the sound going. But let's do it. Oh, why did that happen? All right. Add the stream. All right. Let me know if you guys can hear this. I don't think you guys will be able to, but you guys can read on the thing. I will get the sound going if you guys can't. Can you guys hear that? If not, then here we go. That's probably a no.
Sorry, I was muted. Can you guys hear it now? Are you saying you guys can't hear me? You guys can't hear it at all? Nothing? Can you guys hear my voice? You, okay, you guys can hear me. Yes. Yes, but it's low. <clears throat> okay. So the reason why is turn up your mics because we're going to get rid of this mic. Because you, Now let me know if you guys can hear the video. I'll turn it up. Oh, that's all the way up. No, it's not. Oh, oh, I messed up. See what you guys got me doing now? Sorry. All right. Um, I'm just going to fast forward to Buffalo Horn. But you really, you just need to read. You guys don't need to hear it that well. Just so you guys know. There's not really much sound. It's just music. So who gives a fuck about music? <laughs> That's really, that's, that's actually very impressive. Um, but you guys haven't seen nothing yet. I know that was some buffalo horn, but just, we'll just wait. I believe it's next. Here we go. Pay attention to the direction that they face it. <clears throat> Excuse me, because there's going to be two different videos. Just re really quick. I mean, back to back. It's the same video, but he's going to face it in two different directions. It's a big difference in direction. <laughs> Looks like he needs to anchor his uh, thing down a little bit harder. So right now it's going to be uh, basically facing up, you know, like if you took your scales off and faced them up and down on most carbon fiber scales not cross cut or side cut. What do you guys think? I want to hear in the chat. What do you guys think? What do you think carbon fiber will be able to hold facing straight up in a cube? Remember, we're going to see it turned over. Give me some numbers. I'm not pushing play until we get a couple numbers, at least a couple. What are we thinking? What kind of numbers are we going to generate from carbon fiber? 18,000. Okay. Beard of the Weirdo says 18,000. JJ, thank you, bud. I appreciate the donation, man. 4,000, 12,000, 15,000, 10,000. And we hit some really good guesses. And I appreciate you guys um, joining in and give, giving some guesses. All right. 9,000. Let's see. 
Here we go. <laughs> Everybody talks about how light carbon fiber is, but how fucking strong is it? 20,000 is what that thing maxed out at. Think about that. So what's that mean? We need a big we need a bigger hydraulic press. Let's get it. Got to put it in the bigger press now. It did crack a little bit. So I guess that would be catastrophic failure to an extent. Mike Emler says 25,000. We're about to find out. Remember, we have one more after this or what, you know, we're going to flip it. All right, now watch the gauge. 40,000. 50,000. 60,000. 60, or sorry, tons. 60 tons. I said thousand. So that's 120,000 pounds, right? 60 tons. Every ton is 2,000 pounds. 60 tons is 120,000 pounds. That's fucking crazy. That's nuts. Now, let's do a cross-cut section. So this would be like standing on the side of your scales if you had regular carbon fiber. All right, let's watch it. 20 tons. 40 tons. <clears throat> 60 tons. 80 tons, 100 tons, it maxed out at 200,000 pounds, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that is insane. It's still there, it didn't even crack, it didn't even have a malfunction, there was no catastrophic failure. That's crazy to me. That's mind blowing. You see where it pressed it, but you don't see no cracks or hairline fractures or anything. Look at aluminum. <laughs> Gone. Here's titanium. Gone. Now, remember, guys, that's not hardened titanium. We're going to get. Oh, shit. I accidentally got rid of my other. Thing I had set up. <laughs> I'll fix it. Don't worry. Um, that's crazy, right? Now remember that wasn't hardened titanium that he had there. That was just raw titanium. It's going to be different with hardened titanium, just like steel. It can be hardened, but that is yeah, completely different material when you're talking about you know hardened versus just regular. Um, just like steel, right? But yeah, like a marshmallow. <clears throat> that is right. That's what I thought, Danny. That's exactly what I thought. It just made me like carbon fiber a little bit more. That is mind-blowing. I never in a million years would have thought that it could hold that. And it's like possibly, well, you know, the crosscut section actually... I'm not going to say it makes sense because it doesn't, but it makes more sense because it's layered like this. So it does make a little bit more sense, but the upright version, that's the layers slapped on top of each other and then flipped upright. So the layers are running side to side. That's crazy. 60 tons, 120,000 pounds. Because I'm telling you, I hate carbon fiber. I don't care how strong it is. <laughs> um, my Aunt Dawn says she needs to see a rock set. I do got the rock set pretty close. Let me grab it. Oh, I can lean. Lean it in. 
Oh, we got old Rocky right here. I took her apart the other day and re-oiled her up. Gave her a little TLC. Very smooth. Very centered. These things are so easy to take apart and put back together. Um, easier than a Sabenza. Just two screws. Bang, bang. That's it. They go through to the other side, so there's nothing on this side or the show side. Very easy. Like, literally, even this, I don't have to take this off. All I have to do is take that off, that off, <clears throat> unfolds perfectly. Got the slip. Um, I respect the hell out of it, but I got to be in a carbon fiber mood. All retro 90s vibe kind of thing to dig. See, I, I'll be honest, you know, I'm... It's not that I'm over carbon fiber. It's just, man, we see it on so much. But what I do like is them mixing it up a bit where they're doing, like, I I don't have a knife in cross-cut carbon fiber. I'm close because I have a couple two sons that are, like, where they, um, they're contoured. So since they're contoured, some of the cross-cut section is coming out, even though it's not really cross-cut section, but you know what I mean. I want a full cross-cut carbon fiber overlay or whatever where you really see the fibers. I think that's beautiful. I think that's gorgeous. I love that. Uh, kind of like, you know, even micarta, same thing. I, you know, I want a cross-cut section carbon or micarta. But they are, we are using it too much. And then also like the colored stuff, you know, some of the colored stuff is pretty cool. I like seeing it mixed up fat carbon. And here in just a minute, we're going to talk about where you guys can get some fat carbon scales for your AD 20.5. There is somebody out there selling an AD 20.5. If one of you guys are interested, um, I'll have to pull up his information or whatever, but if somebody's interested, they can contact me later. Um, yeah, Westinghouse Micarta. You know, it kind of reminds me of what's on this, the Westinghouse. I know this has kind of a texture on it, but it really, this re reminds me of Westinghouse. I think it might be Westinghouse. But I've um, tried some Westinghouse uh, Micarta, which is really, really nice Micarta. Um, seems like I'll spoil the surprise. How would you spoil the surprise? Don't be doing that to my channel now. What do I have to do to get a Tucson under two to three weeks shipping? Order one. <laughs> you have to order one to get it at all. <clears throat> and in order to get it in under three weeks, you, first you got to order one because you do have a chance of it getting there in two to three weeks. You also have a chance of it being four weeks. The one guaranteed way to get it is to go on Amazon or eBay, mostly Amazon, and just find one from a USA seller. Uh, that's how I got um, my last two son. It's put away right now. I got it in seven days. You have to actually be in the market. That's the thing. Like a lot of people want to get them, but they're not willing to be in the market. They're not willing to look on Amazon. They're not willing to go on eBay, you know, and look around. You'll, you'll see USA dealers. Um, um, White Mountain Knives sells them. You can go on there. You can get on their email list. You know, when they get them in, you know, then you can pay for it. When is Bear Grylls guest star? I'm trying to get them on next week after um, after uh, Not Your Average EDC. Uh, I'm hoping all you guys go and, or you know what, I'm just making a call out to the knife community now about Metal Complex. We got to do something about this guy because uh, he's fucking shit up not coming on Needs Knives Live. So, uh, it, you know, everybody needs to go over there to his channel, s spam him, uh, torture him, do whatever it takes, and uh, let him know he needs to get on Needs Knives Live. Order on Amazon and end up getting three sun. <laughs> Limited selection on Amazon, but yes. Um, but Nick, it's, it depends because you can buy them on Amazon and not get them from, uh, the USA. They, you got to just check. You got to look at where they're coming from. Um, sometimes they might be used like lightly used, check for that, make sure they're new or not. Um, but you just got to kind of look around. Um, uh, 
I want to get him on the channel. <clears throat> I think it'd be nice to get him on the channel. It'd be good for the channel too. Um, you know, I think it'd be good for, for views. I think a lot of people would like to see it. I love the guy. I think it'd be awesome to have him on. Um, you know, it'd be cool to just have a nice conversation and you guys know what I mean. Did Discovery Channel let him do anything else? <clears throat> That's funny. I don't know. Did they allow him to do anything else? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's funny. Um, Mike Emler says, yes, his channel too. Spam him. Beard of the Weirdo said, I wanted a different color than what is common. Mix it up a bit. Yeah, and that's what I mean. If that That's what I like to see. I like to see the differences, you know. I think that's awesome when we, we do mix it up a little bit. But seeing the same old, same old, yeah, it gets boring. It's cool for a little while, but then it's like people, like companies see it's cool, then all of a sudden everything's got it. And it's like that's when it stops being cool, you know. I hope that doesn't happen to my card for me because I love my card up. But, you know, it can happen. It can definitely happen. Uh, when are we going to MC? If I can get in, <laughs> be removed in eight seconds. Breeze is banned from MC's channel. Um, getting caffeinated for the podcast. Yes, tonight we are going to end at 930. Um, I'm hoping, hoping you guys go jump over to Mike Emler's channel. He's having Lindy Lou and Richie B on tonight. Knife Modders is going to be on Mike Emler's channel. Um, I'm going to make sure I get over there. I thought about asking Craig Medford, actually, JJ. Um, I thought about asking him. There's a few people I got on the list of people that I'm going to ask and start trying to get on. So I'm on it. I'm on it. I watched them on um, YouTube. I've gotten bored of my car to myself. Now I'm loving G10. I like it all. I like it all. I like having variety. I, what I don't want is all of the same thing. So as long as I got some of everything, I'm cool. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like with the titanium, you know, getting different finishes, some anodizing here, maybe some, some coatings here, maybe some uh, orange peel there, you know, inlays here, you know, spice it up a bit. I like it. It'll be, well, be my, 9.30 my time, 7.30 his time. So, depending on where you live. Um, hey, babe, don't forget that laundry. <clears throat> um, okay, so, I'm going to open up a tab. Okay, so, you guys are going to have to, because I closed it when I closed that other one down. So, just give me a half a second. I'll literally get this done. And I'm going to pop this up. We are going to first check out this. This will be really quick. Let me go to share. So what we're about to check out is the new or a new button lock that's coming out from from Kaiser. Okay. So here is Dr. EDC from Kaiser Knives. And if we scroll down here, you'll see the Cormorant. So this is going to be the new version of, you see it on the left, dang it, I didn't mean to do that. You can see and read all about it, the new um, patented locking mechanism he's doing that seems very interesting. You guys can see it on Knife News. I'm messing up, but I want to scroll down here because I'm going to show you just a little clip of it. He's got it right down here. And you see the knife, right? Now, the grooves are cool because I didn't like the, the old cor cor cormorant. I liked the knife, but I'm not, I wasn't a big fan of the white and the X's on it. But you see how the, the button... And the stop pin is going to be integrated into the blade like that instead of it being a groove. If you notice, most button locks have like a groove on the side of the blade. This will actually be through the blade. So possibly extremely good lockup from a button lock. 
We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure all the ins and outs from it, but I'm pretty interested in seeing it. Now, give me one second. I'm going to go back on Instagram just so um, you guys don't see too much. And I got a couple other things I want to pull up because I want to show you guys some of these scales from. All right, here we go. For the, the Demco AD 20.5, I know a lot of you guys got it. So here it is. This is Carbidize, okay? I'll scroll up so you guys can see who this is. This is Carbidize on Instagram, okay? So he, there's his name, Carbidize. You guys can contact him and get fat carbon for your AD 20.5s, among lots of other knives. So don't think it's just the, the AD 20.5s. You guys can see here we got smocks. And we have shamans. You can see he's got other carbon fiber. He also does micarta. $75 for micarta. $115 for the fat carbon for the Demco at least. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe that's the same price across the board. You'll have to talk to him. But you can see here, he's got lots of different materials. Somebody asked me earlier about the, the Demco AD 20.5 and where I would get my scales from. And... This is where this is where I would get the the micarta or the fat carbon for an 8020.5. Now, if I was getting scales on something else, I might possibly go here or oops or somewhere else. But you can see here we got Hindi's, we got Spider Co's, Kale Bradley's, we got all kinds of stuff. If I stop going so damn fast, but He's got a lot of knives on here, lots of cool materials. I don't think he deals with any metals, but specifically my Carter's carbon fibers and possibly some G10s. So definitely check him out. Let him know Neves Knives sent you. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's always nice. Um, but yeah, and then if you look right here, is that, what is that? Oh, that's a Pilar. Oh, my goodness. I thought <laughs> I thought that was a sheepdog or something or the new, um, the um, the October. Guess not. Okay. But you guys get the point. Definitely check him out for some scales. Now, the EMP knives. We talked that we were going to do that. So let me go back on here and get... EMP, here we go. Now, listen, guys, I am not, I don't want you guys taking this. I'm not saying he's stealing anything. I'm not saying that. Some people came to me saying that. And I'm saying he's not. I'm saying that knives these days, you're going to find another knife that looks similar. You're going to. If you, if anybody makes a knife in 2021, you can be damn sure you can find another knife somewhere that looks similar. So I'm saying that I did notice one of them resembled another knife. Somebody said Fair and Forge knives. I agree. Somebody said some uh, some Medford knives. I agree. But it's not, I don't think it's design theft or anything like that. But let's take a look at it. Um, now, we have... The new EMP large, <clears throat> excuse me, man, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep coughing. Um, this is a large version. So you'll see we have a sheep's foot version there and a drop point version. Now, the drop point version is the same as the one I have here right now. This is the large version, though. It'll be like eight inches or something. It's called the XL, 3.5 inch blade probably eight inches overall. Now, if you look at the sheep's foot up top, it looks awfully similar to something I have sitting here, right? Awfully similar. Now, I'm not saying it's a copy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you see what I mean? You know, it's difficult for companies. Yeah, this one has a little hump right here. That one doesn't. So I'm not going to sit here and say that this is you know, he's stealing the design from this. He took the design he already had and put a sheep's foot on there. Yeah, it's got the groove in the hole, very similar to this, but it's still not the same. 
Very different. Exactly, Mike. Very, very different. Now, let's take a look. Oh, shit. I messed up. All right, right here. So here it is in uh, colors, because remember, we have the frag version and then the, the raw version. We have the size difference. So the middle one is the, the one I have, the one I just did a review on. And if you guys don't know, I'm talking about this knife right here. I'll pull it out. The, the, the Nimble, I just did a review on it. Awesome knife. Very, very well made. QSP is making these. I was unaware that QSP could do this level of quality. It feels like React quality. So hats off to them for that. But you can see the size difference. Big, big difference. Now, oh, man. Why did that happen? Give me a second. There we go. I'll put you guys back on here. Just give me one second. Um, I'm pretty sure he sold out of all the orders from the, uh, what the hell was it called? The Thick Boy? Yeah, the Thick Boy. You see um, metal complexes up there. Oh, I should have showed one of my videos was on Dr. EDC's channel I should, or page. I should have showed that. He um, featured one of my uh, videos from Instagram on his channel. I thought that was awesome. It's always nice when you see some of the knife companies feature your videos. Definitely check out EMP EDC. Get your orders in when they drop. The large ones, I don't know if they're for pre-order yet. Definitely check his stuff out, and then you can find out yourself. I'm not positive. We have 68 watching. I noticed Red Wolf went live <clears throat> right before I was going live. Maybe he doesn't know the times I go live, but I thought that was interesting that he did that. I don't care. You know, I care less when he goes live. But, um, but I seen he did a post the other day saying he was done with this stuff, like done with uh, doing videos and I really hope he doesn't do that. I, I hate to see people leave on terms that are negative, and he seemed like it was kind of negative, his decision on leaving. He did a post. You guys can go read it if you want to. Um, but, yeah, I'd rather somebody, somebody's going to leave the community. It's based on changes in their life because they want to or something better. I hate thinking that somebody's leaving because of drama, you know, that damn drama. Um, Kyle, Kyle from, uh, from Red Wolf EDC, he did the video on, uh, the beef with Leon Ma and stuff like that, but yeah. <clears throat> um, what's next? What's next? Uh, the, the, what the hell did I mean there? I don't know what I meant there. Sometimes I write down shit and I think that, oh, you'll know what you're talking about <laughs> when you read it. Nope. No, I won't. Super Steel Steve is calling everyone out on leaving YouTube, not the community. Oh, no, I know that. That That's not what he, I don't, that's not what he was talking about. What he was talking about was leaving. Like, I don't know. Maybe he was just talking about YouTube and going on to uh, Rumble. I tried to make an account on Rumble. I definitely watched Steve's video on Rumble, um, testing Rex 121. But uh, but yeah, there's no way like I could just shut it down and restart there, start back at zero. Like I'm not going to do that. I would do both and post on both, and then if it happened, you know, like if I had the opportunity to change or something, or like you know what I mean, then I would do that. But, you know, trust me, I don't like what YouTube does. It is their platform. They get to decide, you know. So I appreciate being able to be on a platform right now. So um, I do want to get on other platforms 100%. And I don't want to support what they do. But it is a business opportunity for me. So I do have to play by their rules. And, you know, in the future, when I do have a little bit more leverage, then I'll switch over, you know, or something like that, you know, or, or just do both and, you know, do a friendlier one here and not so friendly there or something. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I don't, you know, whatever. Yeah, he had a lot of drama-related videos. 
and I think he just got a bit of heat because of it. I'm fine with it. I mean, when you make drama videos, that's that's what you're going to get. And I'm not saying that's what happened. You said that's what happened. I don't know what happened. I seen he said something about lefties thing. Um, I don't know. I you know I I I kind of expect drama. I know drama is going to happen. Fucking, I can't think of a time in my life that it wasn't drama surrounding it. So, but this is the one place I didn't have that. So I hate seeing it. So, but it is what it is. Um, I just try not to play into it as much as possible. And I'm not saying like that people that are talking about it or doing anything like that are playing into it. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about actual drama. Like that's, um, you know, like the, the, the talking back and forth, you know, drama, you know. Um, so, I don't know. Uh do you have a favorite Tucson titanium frame lock off the top of your head? Not a favorite. I like a lot of Mazwa Mokhtar's designs. I like a lot of Night Morning designs. Um, I like some of Jelly Jerry's designs. I love the TS-223. I love the 129. I like um, I like my 301. I like my 305. Um, the 177. Um the 264 i like a lot of them and there's just so many of them but i really like the 223 um i think that might pass i haven't had it in so long i don't know um but but yeah there, there's just there's so many it's hard to say i'd have to have them all in my hand at the same time and pick it's hard to say when I've had some, and they've gone and came and gone and came, and now I'm trying to remember. You know, when I have them next to each other, I can decide. Yeah, he shut his channel down off of YouTube. He shut it down, and he's on Rumble. You have to put in Super Steel um, Space Steve. It's not like YouTube where it's got, like, a good algorithm for that stuff, and that's kind of the messed up thing that I don't like. Like, I did go on Rumble a little bit. And check it out. And I'm going to set something up on there. 100%. That's my plan. Um, I, I do want to do that stuff. Especially as they grow. I want to be on there. But as of right now. there It's not. Obviously it's not going to be as good as YouTube. That's been around far far longer. But yeah. You have to type in the name exactly as it is. Out of all the guys in this chat have actually met each other other face wait out of all the guys in the chat have actually met each other face to face i've met people from the community uh face to face um i don't think anybody in the chat um i don't know if i would swap over to a different platform i know censorship is happening but it hasn't and encroached on my inhabitable interactions with it well it has you just don't realize it um, I don't think a lot of times you realize it's happening when it's happening, but the point of moving is to get there before it does happen because for certain people, right, it devastates them. If you're not already prepared, it's kind of like, say, if they wiped off my thing right now, right, and then now I have to restart somewhere else. Wouldn't it be better to restart there now and be prepared for it? Like, that's kind of the point. Like, a lot of people think it's just inevitable. And if you know it's inevitable, then why not be prepared for something you know is inevitable? But uh, I'm not saying it is, but it seems like it's going to be, you know, it's just a matter of time, you know. Um, I agree 100%. You can't just leave everything you built here. Yeah, that's very difficult, you know. It took me a do you know how many hours a day I've put into this channel? Like, I don't think people even acknowledge that. Nobody can understand that. Like, today, I, I woke up, started working out, started working on the channel, went to work, got off of work, came home, started working on the channel. I worked on it until 30 minutes before I came on live. I played a game with Kara for 30 minutes before I came on live. Like... I literally, when I say I put in 16 hours a day, I'm not exaggerating. Like, I sharpen knives too. So I'm sharpening knives for people that I consider part of it too. Because that's like, like I'm considering it all just like one business. So whatever's knife related is integrated into it. Between editing, uploading, posting, filming, you know, testing, <clears throat> emailing, uh, Instagram messages, comments on the video, 
you know, it's just, it's, it's never ending. So I put in a ton, a ton of work and I didn't, when I started taking it seriously, that's when I started putting in overtime, overtime, like crazy amounts of time, crazy amounts of hours. And it's hard to say, ah, for a year and a half, I've worked 16 hour days on something and now, ah, fuck it. I'll just go over here now. You know, it's not that simple. Um, and like, I have a plan, right? I have a plan and I'm not saying sometimes it's not good to, to deviate from the plan, but I'm saying like, I want to finish my, I, I, I like finishing what I started when it comes to anything, or at least I try to, you know, so I'm going to finish my plan first, then open up other doors to other things. Like I have plans for other little doors already. So that comes and now if something happens before that, then th yeah, then something happens, but I can't, I can't just, you know, do it right now when it's not part of the plan right now. And if something like, you know, just like with anything, if something stirs you from the plan, then that's when you have to deal with it accordingly. But you know, it's kind of like taking a detour on a highway when you don't know there's traffic ahead yet, all right? And then if you do run into traffic, well, then you might say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to try taking a detour. But you're not going to take the long-ass detour route just because you're thinking there might be or not even thinking. Like, you have no signs that there is or maybe there's a little bit of signs, but you really don't know. Everyone leaving YouTube would be better, wait, would better the world lives these fucking bastards are part of a large problem we have to i agree i trust me if right now if everybody said we're all going i'm going too <laughs> but that's not what's happening what'll happen is 75 people will come that's what'll happen 75 maybe 100 you know which would be absolutely amazing amazing i noticed on um when i went over to steve's video at the time this is just at the time when I seen it. It had like three views or something, right? If it would have been on YouTube, it would have been thousands. And I, my hat's off to him for doing that. I think that's amazing. But he's not on here trying to run a business at all, you know. And and I really am. So, um, but yeah, it, it does suck. And I, I do hope when I do do it that I have a good amount of people that will come over there, right? I, I really do. Or at least that when I do, then I can have both and have something really good going over there that if I, this gets shut down, it's all right. I'm, I'm good over there. Backup plans are always good. I get what Steve is saying and calling for everyone in the knife community to leave you too. But the fact is it won't do anything because we are such a small community. Yep. <clears throat> I'm lost for number. If you guys are lost, don't worry about it. We're getting on a different subject. Okay, so I want to talk about, and this is going to be pretty quick because I am going to do a video on this topic. And this is about stones. The knife community is such a random tiny thing on YouTube. Wouldn't even notice. Yeah, no, they wouldn't care if everybody left. But the point is, is that everybody would go somewhere because you got to imagine that it's not just them, right? It's not just the knife community. It's dozens of communities. There are a lot of communities doing that. So it's not just that. And I'm not saying they would even care. They probably like it better because then their echo chamber would be bigger, of course. So maybe that's why it's not good to do that. Because in that case, you're kind of accepting defeat or whatever you want to call it. You're giving them their echo chamber. I'm not saying whether it's good or bad, I don't know, right? I don't know. I can't speak of whether or not it's good or bad, but I do know though that by just leaving there and letting them have the echo chamber to, to say and do what they want and just giving in, it's like that, that, that there might be something bad to that too, right? It seems like there's negatives no matter what. Got to just make the best of it. Um, yeah. Giving them what they want. Well, the knife, channels left we would have to follow how would we get our knife fix but there would be other ones right there'd be other ones and other channels and other this and other that and people would find it's difficult and wouldn't do it you know because they you know so many different there's so many different avenues that's why eventually you know that that's a good way like right now would be a great time for you guys to start looking into it right 
look into Rumble. Set up an app. Start checking out channels over there so that you already have it. So that when it does happen and it does wind up going over there, you guys are already prepared too. But most of you guys won't do it. And that's that's the point. Um, you got to go where your audience is no matter what. And I'm not saying there won't be an audience there because of course there will be. Of course there will be. It's just it'll take... It'd be like restarting. It'd be like me shutting down my channel or me starting a new page. The one benefit to starting a new channel um, is that you you already have started one, so you know what you're doing a little bit better. When you first start a channel and you've never had one before, you're like in the dark. <laughs> it's, it sucks. You don't know how to do anything. We would be watching knife fights in YouTube between crazy people trying to find out what they're carrying. <laughs> the problem is that other platforms aren't as easy as YouTube because YouTube has been around for so long and has such a huge reach. Yeah, and that that's kind of my point, too, is that there's so many cool features to YouTube that you do have such a huge reach. It's, it is, it's great. It really is. There's just things that, just like with anything, there's things that suck, right? There's goods and bads here, just like there's goods and bads there. Pick your poison. So, sharpening stones, right? Sharpening stones. You guys uh, watch my video, I'm sure. If not, the Workshop Precision Guided Sharpener with the attachment. Sold out like two minutes. It came back out. I'm surprised they got them back out. It's actually a good thing. That's a good. That's good news because that means that look at how fast they dropped them again. Yes, they sold out faster than you could say they were there, but they made them and brought them back quick. So that means they'll probably do the same thing again. Some more good news. I have somebody contacting me on Instagram. They just mailed it to me. I haven't gotten it yet, but it's a prototype of one he's making. An attachment for the WorkSharp Precision Guided System to hold four-inch stones. Now, four-inch stones. A lot of you guys went out and got the Veneve stones, right? I said, get the Veneve stones, get the Veneve stones. Those are the best stones. They're going to give you the edges you want. Now, though, I, I stand by that. I think that was the best thing to get because it's going to be the most versatile. However, there are other stones you want in your arsenal. Aluminum oxide stones. Uh, possibly, because there's different things, right? There's different steels and different edges, like carbon steels, right? Carbon steels don't like diamonds. Uh, you know, you can ask Mike Emma, right? Like, I guarantee he would never sharpen carbon steel with diamonds because, yes, you can do it. You can do it. It's the, the quality of edge you're going to get from it. Doesn't like it. So aluminum oxides, natural stones, things like that are going to be far better for, like, carbon steel. So if you have carbon steels in your arsenal of knives, you might possibly want Arkansas stones, aluminum oxide stones, things like that. There's different stones for different jobs. And I do think that diamond stones, this is my opinion. Other people may vary. I really like the veneers because they don't wear out. They last a long time. Yes, they glaze a little bit, but I, I sold you guys the stone or I linked the stone to clean them off. It's very easy. Um, like when I do a knife, I have to do them one time, right? Every time I sharpen them, I clean them off really quick, rinse them off, put them back in the thing. It's very fast. If you let them build up, yeah, it's going to take a while to sit there and scrub them, and they and they glaze faster. If you don't clean those stones off, they will glaze incredibly fast. So that's why you always just keep them clean. If you always keep them clean, they're fast to clean. Anyways, but aluminum oxide stones will be really good. Diamond plates. So... You guys are thinking, what are you talking about? The Neve stones, those are diamonds. Yes, those are diamonds, but they're not diamond plates. That's diamond-infused resin. So a regular diamond plate, if you're going to do, and this is with certain steels, I've noticed. Certain steels do take a better diamond finish, a more aggressive finish. Because, yes, they're diamonds, but a diamond plate will give you more of an aggressive edge than the Veneve diamonds if you're wanting a very aggressive edge. So depending on the edges you want might depend on the, the, the stones you want.
Now, I'm not saying that the Veneve stones won't give you a very aggressive diamond edge because it will. But certain steels, and it's not even basically any steel, right? Certain steels, certain heat treats, certain this, certain that. There's so many variables that some diamond plates are going to give you a more aggressive edge than the Veneve stones at a low grit. So it just depends on the grit you want, the edge you want, the angles, so many variables. And all I'm saying is that it might be a good thing to invest in diamond plates, the little four inch diamond plates, maybe a little four inch ceramic, um, a ruby, um, some Arkansas stones, not all at once, buy one once a month, right? invest in it and let me just tell you the the arkansas stones will last you a long time very similar to like the veneve stones diamond plates not so much they don't last very long but they're still good to have ceramic stones they'll last you forever as long as you don't drop it and break it it'll last to, for your grandkids so investing in those little things will help you get certain edges and now when you get to say edges that aren't that are they're steels that don't take a good polish. Well, then maybe a ultra fine ceramic might be the way to go. Now, it's going to be up to the heat treat on whether or not how good it holds it. Um, I don't know. Um, I know Mike does that sometimes when he wants a when he wants to polish a steel that's not that doesn't take a polish very good. He uses the ultra fine ceramic, and it gives him a very very nice sharp polished edge on a steel that doesn't take a good polished edge now like i said i can't speak for how well it holds it or not but sometimes people don't really need it to hold it like is the maximum amount of what it can you know some people look at it like if i lose 10 percent of edge retention is it that big of a deal you know and i'm not saying it's 10 percent. i'm just saying you, you know but when you have that system you are open to a lot more options and that's why i said that it's a game changer for that system. Everybody who has one, it's a game changer. And now, like I said, this other person's sending me a prototype for more. So that will give you guys another option to get a stone holder for that system. They sold out so quick, I know a lot of you guys weren't able to get it. Now, WorkSharp is sending me something. I don't know what it is. So as soon as that gets here, it might be a couple weeks. I'm not sure. But when it does get here, though, We'll see what that is. All right. So next thing. Um, oh, knives to practice on. That's another thing I want to talk about really quick. So you guys, everybody, right? When you first start sharpening, sometimes you find it winds up taking way longer than you thought. 99% of the time, it's because you grab the wrong knife to sharpen. What do I mean by that? So, the like this would be the last knife I'd want or I would recommend somebody to sharpen. It's OS 10A. What do you mean? It's OS 10A. It's a simple steel. Shouldn't that be easy? No. It's thick. It's thick behind the edge. It's going to take you far longer. This took me a while to reprofile. I mean, a good amount of time. You never, pro you probably wouldn't even think how long it took me to reprofile it because the, the edge was kind of messed up and not saying messed up from the owner, messed up from the factory. Their grinds w weren't even and they had parts of the edge where the belt was deeper here and not here. And knives with thick edges, you have to remove more steel. So the best knives to start off with and also, heat treat is a big thing, too, by the way. So picking a good company with good heat treat is very important. But I always recommend Civivis. Civivis are extremely good for learning to sharpen on. They're thin behind the edge. However, any, don't buy an M-Tech beard, all the weirdo. Um, <laughs> however, any knife that's thin behind the edge, thin, is going to sharpen very, very good. This new knife right here from O Knife or O Light. This would be a good one. This is nice and thin behind the edge. This would sharpen up pretty quick. Um, even more than the steel, I would focus on that. I would tell most people um, to sharpen uh, 
name of steel, it doesn't matter, S30V that's thin as hell before I would say sharpen a steel and aus eight that's super thick behind the edge because it's going to sharpen way faster. Thin behind the edge leads to really good results for beginner sharpeners. You don't have to remove as much steel. You don't have to, if you're doing a freehand, you don't have to hold the angle as long. It just goes so much faster. And then you can see the results play out very fast. When you sit there for a long time, you stop paying attention to results. You start, you know, like just getting irritated, thinking like, man, am I doing it right? How long is this going to take? Why is it taking so long? So even M390 or 204P, if it's thin behind the edge, hell yeah. But it's got to be thin. Don't start off sharpening thick knives. Now, kitchen knives. Is kitchen knives a good one? No, I, I don't think so. And I'm going to just say why. I think it would be if you're already pretty good. Um, and if you have a fixed angled system, then yeah, yeah, sure. Fixed it, yes. But if you're doing it freehand, the only reason why I'm going to say no is kitchen knives have shit heat treats 90% of the time. Don't grab some kitchen knife. Kitchen knives just fresh out of the kitchen that are just some from Walmart or wherever, Target. They're not even fucking, half of them aren't even really heat treated. They're like, I don't even know what they are. They're just stainless stamped steel. So they don't take good edges. Like, yes, they get sharp, right? Yes, they get sharp, but not like you think. And when you feel them on the stone, you're not feeling good heat treat. You're feeling shit. Yes, if you have like a good steel from a good quality kitchen knife, some, sh you know, something that's been heat treated VG 10 or something like that. Well then, yeah, of course, but most kitchen knives aren't filled with VG 10 kitchen knives. Right? So learn on a good heat treated knife, the thin edge. <laughs> when I first started sharpening, I tried on very cheap knives and it took me so long, but I was very happy because I finally got it. And you know, I felt really good about it. I felt so good about it. Then I wound up sharpening a Civivi for the first time. And it went so fast. I thought I was a professional. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I learned everything. You know, look at how good I can do. <laughs> but it was just because of the knife. And then I went back after like, you know, a week later after sharpening like, you know, those type of knives. Went to something else and realized how much I didn't know. And it was just because I went to from an easy knife to sharpen to oh, a knife that's thick, thick behind the edge. Big difference. She's not calling me. She What she needs to do is get my laundry. Uh, there is a hyena in the other room. Yeah, she's playing her game. She's about to get my laundry. Uh, my woo stuff, kitchen knives sharpen pretty well. So those are nice, right? You, you, it's it's that's why I don't want to say kitchen knives because like if people have good quality kitchen knives, then of course. But think of what majority of kitchens are filled with. They have those those wooden blocks with those cheap knives that you can fucking bend like this, you know, like they're just shit. Nobody knows the name of them. Nobody knows what you know, like anything about them. The only thing you know is they're stamped stainless steel. So, what's up, Amy? Hey, sweetheart. Been a while. Long time no see. Um, would you put Spyderco in that category with Civivi? No, I would not. Now, I will say that when you get decent, a Spyderco can be very easy to sharpen. Spydercos are usually about 20 thousandths behind the edge, give or take. But they have a 15 degree angle on them. So, normally, not all. Normally, they actually put like a 15. Spyderco is one of the very few companies that actually put a good angle already on their factory edge. Their factory edges are usually a great angle. Um, so you would have to match that angle, hold that angle. Now, after you've done some, then yeah, right? But to start off with, I wouldn't say start off with them. Now, I think they're very easy. I do. And they can be. But freehand, you have to hold your angle low. And um, their heat treats are normally good for newer ones. I don't recommend doing older ones um, for the first few knives you sharpen. It just depends, though. But 
I mean, it can be good. If you have a fixed angle system, then yeah, maybe. But remember, though, it's it's twenty thousandths behind the edge, so it's going to take longer than a knife that's ten thousand, fifteen thousandths behind the edge. Um, my Faber wear are worthless and not even going to get touched by by a stone. Wait, even on my most bored days, I just did my boss's kitchen knives. They were wrecked, wrecked. I, I, and I, all I did was I just brought the work sharp. <laughs> On kitchen knives and fixed blades that don't really require a real quality freehand or fixed angle system edge, I just use the work sharp. Does them fast, does them good. They have a good edge. They're hair shaving, you know, paper cutting edges. And they're convex edges, so they're tougher, which I think is really good for kitchen knives. So that's what I do with kitchen knives normally. Now, Certain kitchen knives, yes, I'll put a fix or a, you know a freehand edge on, but with those type, they were like what you were talking about, just some cheap kitchen knives of you know question mark steel. She's funny and pulls no punches, and she'll fuck a knife up using it. Um, I'll just send all my knives to some dude named Jared from Neves Knives. There you go. There you go. That's what I, that's what I'd recommend first. Okay. So next I want to talk about shit knives. Okay. Crap knives, knives that, and I'm going to bring up a company. I've seen a couple people review them soon or recently. The war spear knives. You guys probably seen my video i did give one away the best one uh, i still have two left now i'll probably wind up giving them away right but you feel bad as a knife reviewer giving something away that that you don't like or that you gave bad criticisms to by the way ltk is sending one out to have tested because they're supposedly 14C28N. I'm very curious to find out if they're really using 14C28N. I would guess probably, but we'll see. We'll see, right? Now, this is the thing, is that we are in a time with great quality knives, right? They're not horrible because they're only 30 bucks, but when you can get a knife for the same price that's twice as good, like literally twice as good hands down. It's hard looking at a knife like that and saying, yeah, it has good fit and finish. Does it though? Like, does it? Um, when you look at other knives that are killing it, and then you look at, and I'm not giving them shit. You know, I hope their, their quality goes up, but I had three of them. Two out of the three were bad. Right, two out of the three, one of them was okay, was decent, but I still wouldn't say it was great. And also, one of them looks like my damn looks like a Rockstead clone. And that's another thing, I've seen all kinds of Rockstead clones. It looks like it looks like, like I seen on Stas's channel, he had a couple knives, they were for sure Rockstead clones. Well, not clones, Rockstead inspired knives. Um. War spear heat treat seems soft big time when I sharpen it. I, you know, I don't think you can expect it not to be. <laughs> when you look at everything else, it just seems like they're not the best quality, right? Sometimes you get what you pay for. And this is my point right now, is that we are always looking for a product that is better than what we paid. And I think we should. Um, it's kind of like, do you want a knife for $30 that is a $30 knife? Or would you rather get a $60 knife for $30? Most people want a $60 knife for $30 and you can have that. So getting something that's a $30 knife that's worth $30 and looks like a $30 knife you know, it's, it's not really exciting. It's not saying they're horrible. It's not saying that they're pieces of shit, $10 knives. No, nope, it's a $30 knife. That's what it is. It's a $30 knife. But there's so many other companies 
that have knives that are $30 or $50, but they look, feel, seem like a $100 knife. So now giving a knife away, it's hard. It makes me feel bad giving a knife away like that because I don't want it, you know. But I also think that it's good because I can give it away to somebody who would appreciate it or would want it or how they can give it away or sell it or trade it or whatever. So <clears throat> I don't want to sell it because I think selling it, I feel bad selling it, to be honest. <laughs> Probably lower the price like crazy. And why should I? All right, I fixed one of them. And, you know, I, I don't know. I just think uh, giving it away would be the best thing to do. But you do kind of feel bad because I like giving away knives I like. I don't mind giving away a knife that's that's good, that's just not my style. Like, say, I have a Tucson right now, right? It's a Tucson that I do not like. I do not like this Tucson. This is a Tucson that's not my style. I don't like it. I originally bought it thinking it was going to be. Found out it's not. I do not like it. However, it's still a great knife. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with it. Top notch. Well, it's good. So giving that away, I don't mind giving that away because it's just not my style. That's different than giving away a knife that you think is shit. That, you know, detent lash, uh, lock rock, uh, this, that. Too weak of a detent. Too strong of a detent. The clip sucks. You know, shit like that. It's one thing if it's just one of those things. But when you have all those things, that's why sometimes when I get these really crappy knives, I hate saying that, you know, because I don't want to... I feel bad because I know there's a person behind it. There's a person behind the design. There's a person behind the company. And they're proud of their product. Guaranteed they're proud of their product. And I want them to be proud, but I also want them to make the product better. I, I think it's important for us to be honest so that they go back to the drawing board or just improve the things that suck. I think there's so many knife reviews out right now. It's very hard. I don't know. From my perspective, maybe I'm just so deep in the knife community that I look at it like this, but I would think that you could watch a few dozen knife reviews and figure out what's good and what's not. But I don't know. Uh, or what to make sure is your product has in it and doesn't have. But I don't know. Um, gold is soft, though. <laughs> gold is soft. All items tend to find their market value. Bad knives stay cheap. Good knives tend to get pricier. Right, but also good knives prices drop because the market is so big. There's so many companies and there's so many companies trying to beat other companies. You know, that that's kind of the beauty, right? That you have makers, companies fighting to sell us their product. Why is you, why should I buy your product? Right? Well, it's better than theirs. Prove it. All right, and if you can, I'll buy your product. And most companies know that. And I understand that, Marco Polo. I personally don't agree with that, but I also do, on the other hand. I, I get it. I get wanting to, sh like, there's two ways to look at it. One, you can look at it that... I'm not reviewing bad knives because I want to show you good knives because that's what I want you to buy. Not want, but think, you know, you should buy. This is what I want to advertise for my people. I do. Lots of companies do that. There's lots of people that they're not going to fucking review a shit product because they won't stand on it. So they're saying, this is a good product. I stand on it. So I will review it. It will get my attention and it will be able to get on my channel. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, however, I do think there's something to showing the negative ones so that you can show people and tell people you might not want to invest your money in this. And I look at it like that, you know, but I don't, I won't just do those. And I don't even do those intentionally. I just, if I get it and you've seen my first impressions, I feel obligated now to review it and show you like, Hey guys, listen, I did a first impressions on this. Don't, don't go buy it. All right. It's, it's not, it's not going to be a good product for you to buy. I can't stand by it. 
right? And I think that that is a good thing to do. That's a good service to do. Now, that doesn't mean what's up, Lefty. Lefty's in the house. Definitely go check out Lefty's channel, Lefty EDC. But I do think, though, that there's still a limit to where I don't want to just do that. I want to do 90% good products that I, I, you know, I can say are good products, whether they're my style, that's different. You know, I don't want to put me into it because that's not usually what it's about because it's about if the style's good or sorry, if the build quality is good and it's your style, then get it. It's a good knife. It doesn't have to be my style because then I'm, I'm putting more about me into the knife than whether or not, because like, I can review a knife and say this, I wouldn't buy it because it's not my style, but if it's your style, this is a damn good knife, right? That's where it kind of folds. That's, that's where the reviews come in because if it's only about me, then I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't review half the knives I review because you know what I mean? Because it's, I would have to literally seek them out, pick them out and buy only those. And those are the only knives allowed on the channel because they're my style, right? <laughs> then I wouldn't see half the knives I see, Be, but it's not about that. It's about products. And if they're good, if they're good quality, do they have good geometry. Do the clips work great? Do they cut good? Do they have good heat treat? Because I don't expect everybody to have the same style as me. That's not what it's about. It's about the quality, the quality of the knife. Lefty EDC, um, D10 Diva in the house. Um, well, review the knife and be honest. Yeah, well, that's what I that I, I like to do. You know, and I'm not saying I'm C's being dishonest. You're saying that. Um, I don't think he's necessarily being dishonest. I just think I don't want to talk about anything personal or anything like that. But like, there was a knife recently that he he wasn't going to review because it was shit, you know, and he doesn't want to, to bash a company. Like, like I was just saying, there is somebody behind that product. There's somebody behind that product, that design, that company. And if he doesn't allow it on his channel, well, then, you know, it, it could possibly be shit because it didn't wind up on his channel, you know, or review. Now, I don't know. You know, I don't want to speak for him, but you know, you guys have heard what he says and that's, that's how he feels. And he's going to run the channel, how he feels necessary. And guess what? It's working for him. It's working for him. We can't hats off to him, man. I mean, what he's doing better than me. Fuck. I, you know, maybe I should take notes, um, but, uh, but no, I like to run it the way I like to run it. And I try to bring good products on here. And if I do get a bad product, I try to say it and say what's wrong with it, what I don't like. And sometimes it is a good product. There's just things about it. Like kind of like um, the the one recent one, or not the most recent, but um, the one. Oh, man, I can't even think of the name of it now. Uh, the Migoron. The Migoron knife. That was a great knife. It just had some issues. Those issues can be dealt with. This one right here is phenomenal. This is a fantastic knife. So their build quality potential and, you know, does everything potential is off the charts. They have the abilities. That design just had a couple little flaws. You can expect that for sure. When you, you know, there's so many. You, you got to expect some failures. Every, you're, there's going to be failures. There's going to be there's going to be companies that make a mistake here or should have did this better or shouldn't have did this. Expect that. However, this is what I said to him too. Um, I usually don't like to say things I speak on in private messages or anything, but I did tell him, I said, listen, because he, I heard he did get a hold of Lefty, which I, hats off, that's good. Good thing he did that. I, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to have to bash him for not doing that, right? But I told him that it, it was good if he just says, uh, we, you know, that we're going to do better next time. You know, the issues that people had with this product or this knife, we are going to deal with them accordingly and do better next time. 
And if anybody has any issues, we take full responsibility and we'll deal with it, right? But doing that in a way to where it's public is important because if you want to make sure you keep buyers, you want to keep buyers, make sure they know that you stand by your product. Make sure they know that you are always looking for advice to better your product and are willing to do it and change it. Nobody likes a, a company that is on their high horse and isn't willing to listen and also isn't willing to take responsibility for the product or willing to change and make it better if there's places to make it better, you know? So, and I, you know, I just, just said that I think that would be the best way you could go about it. If you want the respect, if you don't care about the respect from the community and you don't care about selling products, then then don't. <laughs> and if you want people to respect your product and want to buy your product, be honest about it, you know, take responsibility for any issues and be open about it. We're talking about a knife company. If they sell a knife with issues, that's it. That's all I was talking about. No, I was talking about knife companies. If they have, if they sell a knife and the knife has issues and they don't deal with it or respond or um, take the product back and give you your money back or um, they hear like all their knives had bad clips, well, then the next line that you come out with needs to have better clips, um, you know, and make sure you tell the community, listen, we heard your complaints. Your complaints are the clips sucked on this. Guess what? The next batch is going to come out with a better clip. Or, you know, the next knife, right? That doesn't necessarily have to be that, not, you know, that, um, you know, model or whatever. Anyways, we're going to go to another, another subject. That one, I think, got off on the weeds a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in the War Spear 14C28N test. I think it's going to be good. Um, so we were, I was talking about knives that don't feel like their price, right? Knives that do feel like their price and above, like, you know, we always talk about two sons, right? Two sons, they definitely feel above the value of what they cost. Civivi, Civivi's definitely feel like way above their cost. Um, there's a, like, even these, these Migron knives. They feel way above their cost. At least this one does. The other one, not so much. Um, Knife Sergeant, I know I am a CRKT apologist, but I don't think that they ever thought they were the best on the market. They just think they're still good or innovative. I do think they're very innovative, um, but I just think they should play to the community a little bit more rather than the people that buy at Walmart. Uh, Migaron refunded me after I reached out a few times. Seems some others have returned theirs. I wish them the best. They have potential for sure. Right. And that's what I was basically talking about, that I was happy to see them, that they talked to you and that everything worked out because I had said in another live that I wasn't happy that they hadn't yet, but I'm glad that they have, and I, I talked to him personally and basically just said, because he asked me, have people came to you with issues? And I said, yeah. And um, we talked about the issues. I'm not going to go into our, our personal conversation, but we talked about the issues and um, we're talking about what he can do moving forward. And I think that's amazing. That is a company I want to stand by. I want to stand by a company that actually cares about their product and cares about the people buying their product and whether or not they're happy. Because it doesn't matter if I can sell, sh you know, 100 pieces of shit to, so to somebody, right? That doesn't matter. It's can I get the people that bought those knives to come back and buy more shit, right? Not literally pieces of shit. You know what I mean? Like, can I get them to come back and buy more and be happy to buy more because I'm a good company, because I stand by my product, because I'm willing to change the things I messed up on or um, or refund the money, right? You're not happy? Here's your money back. Buy my product next time, please. Please invest in me because you know I'll give you your money back if you're not happy. 
that is a good business, right? That's a good company to stand by. What you don't want is the company who tries to say, ah, well, you tinkered with it. So we can't refund your money now. Or, uh, you know, well, you know, just delete your name. <laughs> Avoid that guy. Avoid that guy. So I think I think it's good that they did that. Yeah, I uh, glad to hear things are working out for us. I thought that was Megaron. Um, pants clip wiggles when tight as it gets. The blade was dull. Inlay glued fall. Yeah, there, there was. I think the main problem because I didn't hear of anybody else's inlays falling out. You were the only one, so I I wouldn't say that was a problem with everybody. But yes, the clip wiggling, that was one thing. Edges weren't sharp. That's another thing. That's fixable, right? Because you can resharpen your knife. So we'll just put that one on the back burner. Um, but yes, the clips wiggling. My biggest issue was where the stop pin was and the the plunge grinds. But that's me, you know. I got so when I mix the other two things, you know that that's. It's not a bad knife. It's just those are some little issues. So it can be fixed, though, right? It can be fixed. And that's my point. Beautiful knife. Great product. Great. A lot of things. I think some of the models didn't, weren't centered. Another thing. Those things can be dealt with. Like this one, man. This knife right here is done so well. Like it doesn't even make... This thing's great so far, right? I haven't tested it, but I... You know, I've been playing with it, and it seems phenomenal. So I see their potential, and I've seen the potential from the other one. All right, next subject. Um, i seen Grateful Panic was talking about my hair, so now I keep checking it. I was joking. <laughs> In his live last night. Um, I'm not going to read that because that's not to me. What's up, EDC Journey? I met a guy at work who actually likes a wiggle, wiggly clip. My mind was blown, but he was like that it moves when he grips it because I, it gets out of the way. That's, that's dumb. That's dumb. Nobody wants a clip that moves. You want a clip that is solid as a rock. That's why I think two screws is usually better than one. Does this one have two screws? No, one screw, but it's in set. You either, if you're only going to have one screw, it has to be inset in a tight spot. Like, you know, where the, the clip sets in, it has to be tight. Or put two screws. Many people think we are in the golden age of knives, but I disagree. Wait until the wealth and production that was stolen from us start pouring back into the U.S. There you go. Um, How is that triple F? How much was that thing? It looks incredible. My PM2 and Nkosi are the most def wait, are most definitely the most reliable knives I own. I have a lot of reliable knives. Um uh, the hell did that mean? Oh. All right. Um I talked about that, talked about that. We're in story time mode, ain't we? Oh, yeah. People are saying. It. Okay. So, um, we got 25 minutes. So, one of these stories, I think I spoke on it a little bit um, before, but not really in depth too much. I'm not going to be able to get too in depth. But this one has a little bit, a little bit to do with a breeze. So, but I'm not going to tell his part of the story because I'm not going to speak for him. I was not there. But, so, let's go. All right, so, we, I told you guys about how we used to do CB stuff. You know, CB radio, you know, break one nine for a radio check, you know, uh, CB radios. And we used to have ones for, like, work and things like that. But uh, a bunch of people breed... Yeah, yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> um, I'm not going to speak any too much about your your part of the story. So, um, so anyway, so the guys, a lot of the, the guys would have them in their cars and play games, you know, goofing around on the CB radios. But there were people on the other ends of those radios that 
are very serious people. You could say, you know, some of them have, you know, groups of friends that are very close to them or just people, right? People in general, like almost like some of them were almost like CB gangs, you could say, like, because they had their friends and very close knit friends and they owned certain channels, literally owned those channels. No other people spoke on those frequencies because it was like theirs. And I didn't know this at the time until later on, you know, when a lot of the family started getting involved in it, but they were out messing around. And like I said, I'm not going to speak on too much of breeze as part of the story, but they were out messing around and, you know, somebody on the other end was very mad. And, uh, I guess pulled a firearm out on him, right? Pulled a gun out on him. And so, you know, that's about the end of the story. I'm going to tell on breezes on because I, you know, I wasn't there, but so that happened. And then, so a lot of my family got really mad and wanted to find the person who did that. So we, they all, not all, but a lot of them bought CB radios and started seeking this person out, figuring if they harassed enough people, these people would come out of the woodworks. So for months, for months, like my dad, uncles, people, just people, I'm not going to name names besides my dad because he's passed away, got CB radios and um, were just harassing people, harassing them, figuring because we wanted, they wanted people to show up. And uh, people were getting mad. People were legitly getting mad. And um, eventually, we they got a couple people to show. Well, lots of people showed up, by the way. Lots of people showed up. As soon as they found out it wasn't the right person. One time, uh, you know, my dad had me uh, harassing these people. And these dudes showed up. And my dad showed up because he was listening the whole time but not saying anything. Wound up showing up. And uh, <laughs> they were in a Jeep. And they pulled up. And he pulled up and jumped out and went right over to them and grabbed their radio and ripped it out of their fucking dash. Just ripped it out and slammed it on their uh, their hood of their car and was just freaking out, told them to get the fuck out of there and blah, 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 blah. They weren't the people, so it didn't matter to him, right? Well, then finally, they got in contact with the, the, the person that was... Cl there's a lie coming up, but they, the person saying that they were the person, right? Um, they didn't know at the time that the person that had did that to say Breeze was lying, lying. So um, claiming he was somebody he wasn't. Anyway, so that the person that went by that handle or that name showed up with his friend. And when he showed up, it only looked like there was a couple people standing outside. And as soon as they pulled up, garage door open and like 50 people poured out. My old man wouldn't let me be part of it. You know, besides the CB stuff, he made me stand up on the balcony because I was too young, right? Because it was basically like grown man stuff, right? So I could watch, but I couldn't be a part of it. So I had to stand up on the balcony and I'm standing up there and I watch these 50 people come out and just surround these dudes. Dude pulls out a knife on my uncle, and my uncle says, oh, yeah? He runs back and says, I got something for that. He grabs a pipe. I think it was a pipe, and runs over there, smacks the fucking knife, and then, you know, does one of these with the with the pipe on the dude's chest and slams on the truck, and now he's over the top of him, choking him with the pipe, and uh, my dad has got this other guy in the, door, in the doorway of the vehicle and is... Um, like, like kind of choking them and slamming the door and like, you know, it's just kind of chaotic. And then finally, one of the friends um, that was there actually when it happened says, that's not them. That's not the guy. I'm not going to say the name, but he said, that's not that name. And they all just stopped. You know, and, and the dudes were like, that's what we're trying to tell you, <laughs> you know, because they don't know what's going on. They ain't got a clue. But the point is, is the guy who actually did it to, to Breeze lied about who he was. So uh, they wound up actually becoming friends with these guys. But the whole journey finding them and catching them was crazy. It was so crazy. There were so many interactions with people that, uh, that went good and bad. Uh, my dad wound up becoming friends with the one guy, like really good friends. And uh, wound up becoming like, you know, 
really into the CB stuff. And, you know, then everybody had CBs. They eventually wound up catching the real guy. Um, I'm sure beat writing names down and drawing. Sounds like some Dukes of Hazard shit. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, but um, but they did wind up catching up to the real guy. That's not uh, really a story for right now. But, uh, but yeah, it, it was pretty crazy. And like I said, I was standing up on a balcony just watching it. The other dudes, luckily there was somebody there that had seen what happened with uh with breeze that night to actually know that it wasn't the right people because they were getting fucked up like <laughs> um but anyways um what time is it 9 11 i was going to tell this other story but i think we should just chit chat because this other story i think it'll last a little bit too long i should have just jumped on that one um he was never heard from again <laughs> um I deployed to home in 2011. I deployed to Hellmand. I don't know what Hellmand is. In 2011. Um, thank you for your service. What a shithole. <laughs> yeah, it's a shithole. It is. It is a shithole. Do you know what steel is in the concept Damascus? I think... I think it's 9CR. I think it's basically like the same stuff Civivi's using. That's what it, what it is. Shout out to Tri-State EDC. He's trying to get to 1,000 followers. He's getting really close. If one of the moderators can please, please put up his link. I'd really appreciate it. Tri-State EDC so that people can get over there and give him a follow. He's almost to 1,000. It'd be great to get him over 1,000. Uh, kind of like a, a gift from the community. Let's get him over 1,000, please. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could just jump over there, give him a follow, get him over 1,000. Because if he gets over 1,000, he can get monetized. It'd be really good for him. And, you know, I remember what it was like when I got over 1,000. You know, it just it makes you weak, man. It really does. And I'd really appreciate if you guys could just link him in the, the, the comments so that people can get there. Yes, Q and Fiend is usually pretty fast at that. I figured he would have already had it, but he's slowing. Oh, shit. <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> I was going to say he's slowing down, but he beat me. <laughs> Thank you, Fiend. I appreciate it. Please go give him a follow. Get his ass over a thousand. I know it would make his week. Shout out to Grateful Panic too. Absolutely. Go sub to Grateful Panic. Knife Reviews. That's another one. Let's get his followers up too. Let's get everybody's followers up. This community is so great. Um, there are There is like a tight knit like circle. Like I sent, spend my time in. And I know it's way bigger than the circle I hang out in. But I really like Grateful Panic's channel. Um. I was telling him yesterday, I don't think he's seen it in his life, but I said, you'd be a lot cooler if uh, your live feed was inside that van that's in your sticker. You know, like if I knew that like you were really sitting in your van doing the lives or doing your channel or your reviews or whatever, I said, you'd be a lot cooler if that was true. But uh, there we go. There's grateful panics. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely go sub to him. Here it is again. <gasps> Bang. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Definitely go sub to these guys. These are channels that are working really hard. And, you know, I know what it's like to, to work really hard and really appreciate the subs and followers you're getting. Like right now, man, we, we already got another 200 subs. I just hit 10K. That's so badass. We're going to be at 15K before you guys know it and having a party. I do have the giveaway coming up. Shout out to the Patreons because we do got a badass giveaway coming up. I'm going to lay out five knives and the two winners that win from the giveaway. I'm going to do two. It's probably going to be more than I even make a month. Uh, I'm going to try not to make that happen. <laughs> But as you guys know, I do get a lot of stuff donated to the channel. So 
Um, but it's all expenses. It is. Um, but since it is for the 10K, I am trying to make it really good. Usually I do one good knife and then one budget knife or something like that. I'm just going to set up five knives. There might be a budget knife in there. There might not be. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do a few budget knives and then five good knives and let them uh, pick out, you know, one or two or something. We're going to make it a good giveaway for the Patreons this month. I mean, it's always a good giveaway. It always is. Like I said, I feel like sometimes I'm giving away more than I'm even making up, more than the channel's making off of Patreon, but that's all right, you know. The point of the giveaways was to build Patreon. So, and, you know, it's been pretty successful. I think we're up to 69 Patreons. That's amazing, man. That 69 people are out there supporting the channel. And, and the thing is, is that that's not how many entered the giveaway. The last time, I think it was like 26 people from the Patreons entered the giveaway. So it's not like these people are like, oh, man, I don't want to have to fight between 70, 80 people. You don't, you know, because half of the people don't even enter the giveaways. So it winds up working out for the people that actually want to win giveaways because there are so many people that, you know, they're, they don't really care about winning anything. They're just there to support. So you guys have a great chance of winning great knives and other stuff too. Um, I am probably going to give away that rail light that I got from, um, from uh, the, the through night. This thing is pretty badass. I got another flashlight coming. I'm not going to give away this one because I got the other one coming and it's probably going to wind up. I'm probably going to do like a top five EDC flashlight. But damn, this thing is like a spotlight. It is so bright. I actually put it up against my Warrior Olight. Not this one, my Warrior, which is a little bit bigger than this one. It's over a thousand lumens and you can clearly see this thing shining right through the Olight which I thought was crazy, but it's just, it's, it's a, it's a little spotlight. That's what it is. It's tiny, but damn, this thing is powerful. And I think it's only like six, 700 lumens. It is. And if you guys watch the video, I show me and Kara frog hunting and man, you can see like so clear just in a straight line. Like it's like, it's just a beam, like a laser. Jared, would you do a live about cut proof gloves? Do a live? Uh, what are you saying? Are you talking about my hands again? Is that is that like a, a joke against my hands? Or is that serious? I would totally review some cut proof gloves. Um, I'd have to get some. I don't have any, obviously. <laughs> hey, Josh, thank you, man. They might. Congrats, everyone, on your Ks, whatever they might be. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Been too dry for frogs this year. Fucking frogs are crazy where I'm at. I did an Instagram video. Me and Kara keep finding these big daddies. I'm talking about biggest frogs you've ever seen. And we take a stick and we put it next to the frog. And if we're shining a spotlight in its eyes, it's blind. Right, so it can't see nothing. So when we touch its nose with the stick, it goes, it just chomps at it. And I mean, it seems like the thing's aggressive, but it just it thinks a bug, a bug landed on it, so it's biting at the bug. But it looks so aggressive, like it's like Arr! trying to get the bug. But these things are huge. Um, but uh, oh, grateful panda, he's blushing over there. Um. Yeah, I appreciate you guys going over there and subbing to his channel. Um, anyone else? I'm stealing Jared's thunder from his live. But can definitely check out EDC Journey's channel too, since he wants to steal the thunder. Show him what thunder is and get over there and give him a shock. His channel's pretty awesome. Oh, what just happened with my chat? Uh for <laughs> gang banging frogs coming out the woodworks. Yeah, I did a post making it sound like um 
I basically did like kind of like 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 what the news says about you know everything you know kind of um like lock your doors you know forget all your rights and all this other shit because uh killer frogs are on the loose and it's only a matter of time before they before they get you or get to your door or whatever I said I don't remember it was hilarious though but in the video you see the frog we showed it fast and then in slow motion where it attacked the stick. And this is every night these things are doing that. I mean, we can, it's only the big ones though. The little ones, they'll just jump. Maybe. What the hell? Where did that go? Maybe for a few, if there's interest, I don't know what that means. Um, Hide your kids and your wife. Yeah, hide your family. I, I said all kinds of shit. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I should have played it because that would have been funny. Um, but, yeah, we have fun work because we're not too far from a, a little um, retention pond that just has so much life. Crawdaddies. Um, there's beavers, but I don't think they're beavers. I think they're swamp rats. I forget the name of swamp rats. Anybody know the name of a swamp rat, what the, the actual name is of them? There's a name for them. Um, anyways, they're like beavers. So there's those. There's tons of frogs, giant frogs. And we go and mess with them, you know, at night. Go and flashlight hunt them. We lick them. Yeah, we look for the cane toads. We don't have any cane toads, but if we did, we'd be licking them. Nutra rat. I'll eat some frog legs. Frog legs are delicious. It's like greasy chicken. Um. But I'll eat anything. Not a muskrat. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. It's not a muskrat. They're literally, they look just like a beaver. The only difference is, is instead of having a flat tail, they have a rat tail. That's really the only difference. But they're identical to, to beavers. No, not a muskrat. A uh, fisher cat, no. Uh, oh, here it is, right there. A nutria. Yes, a nutria. Sinister, man, you're smart. Yes, a nutria. Yes, I think that's what they are because that's what they look like. They look like nutria. They like, you know, like I was just saying, they have a, a rat tail instead of a big old flat tail. But they look just like you would you would never think it was anything else but a beaver. They look identical. They even act like beavers. Um, but but yeah, they're they're called like you know, basically just you know water rats or whatever. Splinter, yeah. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, but they're they get big though. They get big. Yes, Nutria do get big. That we got a baby one over there. It's about this big, and then there's a big one. Um, and then what they do is they dig like holes next to the water, like a beaver builds a dam. These guys just dig holes next to the water that are hooked up to the water. So they actually swim into their thing, just like a beaver does. And they swim up and into their den that's underground next to the water. We have one that's also next to a retention pipe. So the, the retention pipe is going into the water and he's got a hole dug next to it. So he literally lives on the side of the pipe. And then he uses the pipes to go from one retention pond to another. Yes, definitely. Mike Emler's next in seven minutes. He's going live with Lindy Lou and Richie B. Knife Modders. I'm sure there's going to be tons of great, great information in there about knife modding. Um, yeah, a southern barbecue. I actually watched somebody the other day cook one up and barbecue it. That's hilarious that JJ is saying that. They literally made barbecue out of um, one of those. A swamp rat. Um, I've read that Nutria is good to eat. They ate it. They ate it, and they said it was good. His kids were eating it. His whole family was eating it, and he showed exactly how they they do it, and it, I'd eat it. I was even telling Kara when we seen it. I'm like, all I can think about is barbecue now. Because <laughs> when we seen it, you know, it was like, I don't think that's a beaver. And then we seen the tail and everything. We're like, oh, yeah, that's a Nutria. And I'll, then I was like, oh, man, I just watched that video where that guy was cooking it. He said, fuck, man, now all I can think about is barbecue. About to go hunt me some Nutria now tonight. 
good shit. Um, that channel that I watched that on is the mouse guy. Do you guys ever see that guy? He um, he makes mouse traps. He has like a farm, and he catches mice, but he catches all kinds of shit because he makes these mice traps. And he, he likes to collect them, too. He loves mouse traps, And he shows people how to eat different things, like, of the forest that he catches. And one of the things, he caught one of those, so, in a trap that was destroying somebody's property and or pond or something. Because they destroy shit just like a beaver. beaver you know, if you got a lot of beavers, man, they'll destroy everything. So, well, you wonderful people, enjoy your time over at Elmer's Place. Thanks, Breeze. Um, thanks for always joining, man. Love you, cuz. Um, the Mouse Trap Channel. Yes, the Mouse Trap Channel. I love that dude. I, th I think that dude's great. The F Frank Rizzo. <laughs> Jerky Boys. He is fucking Frank Rizzo. Who? Frank Rizzo. <laughs> we used to prank call people with that shit. That's hilarious. Sean Woods. Yes. Sean Woods. I think that's his name. Sean Woods. I think that's what it is. The YouTubers that snipe rats with night vision scopes. That's crazy. Who is this great... Wait, great what? Who is this graded Parmesan <laughs> channel? Oh, Todd Carr. Uh... Nick Martins is saying howdy to Jason. They're all saying howdy to Jason. What's up, Jason? Yes, here's the Mousetrap Guys channel right here. Hopefully it's the right one. I'm sure it is. Fiend's usually pretty good at that. Um, great content, though, guys. Now, let me just say, if you go back to his earlier stuff, you will actually see the death of mice. YouTube started flagging his shit because it was just too much death. Kind of like, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because the mink guy, the guy who who has um, a mink and he hunts rats with a mink and with dogs, he's got an amazing channel too. They kill rats all the time and show it, but this mouse guy got flagged for killing mice, so now he doesn't show the death. But if you want to see the death go a little bit earlier on his channel and you'll see some good stuff. Uh, I'm not saying it's cool to see mice die. I'm just saying sometimes you like to see how the mechanism works or the whatever, you know, is in action. Sometimes you like to see the actual action. You know, we're all fucking adults here, right? But, I don't know. I guess maybe the kids. Uh, mink are supposed to be mean as hell. Well, he has a pet mink, and he goes and hunts with it. He's trained it. He's a, he's a dog trainer, a mink trainer, and he's even got a, uh, a monitor now, a monitor lizard. He's trained them all, and he hunts with them. So farms hire him to go to their farm and get rid of their rats because farms will have massive rats, and they'll just devastate everything. So he has his dogs, his dogs hunt, and he has a mink. The mink goes down in the hole, and you get to see the mink down in there in action fucking shit up that thing will get him in the water you've never seen a mink that's so awesome and the dogs know the mink so since they know each other they actually help each other it's insane and i understand it being a dog trainer i understand like the whole concept i know exactly what he's doing and how he's doing it so i find it fascinating but um you guys might not all right guys get over to mike emler's channel i love you guys thank you guys for hanging out with me don't forget Mike Emler's channel right now. We're all heading over there because Lindy Lou and Richie B from Knife Modders, you know they're going to be talking about some badass mods and how to do this and how to do that and what not to do and things like that, all about your knives, how to fix things, how to not fix things, how to get rid of this. Who knows? I don't know. Let's go check it out. I love you guys. Peace. And thanks for all the donations, guys. You know.